Thank you so much for um, having me here and congratulations to SAB, to HDI for Good. Uh, this is just um, such an inspiring and positive thing to be part of. So Zolega, Lisa and your team um, and everyone at SAB, really congratulations. I think we should give, him, give them a huge round. I think there's so much to say about procurement, about BE, uh, whether good, whether bad. But I think the most important thing that differentiates the most successful initiatives from the ones that are not successful is what is the true intention? What is driving the decisions? Is it just to tick boxes and make numbers? Or is it to really make a tangible difference? And I think this is one of those initiatives that's driven by the idea of making a tangible difference sense the atmosphere and you can see it and most importantly you can see the quality of women that are here and the quality of businesses. So congratulations to you ladies and to everyone involved. So I'm going to talk a little bit about mentorship. It's a subject I'm extremely uh, passionate about uh, as an entrepreneur, as someone who's been mentored and as someone who mentors others. Um, we cannot succeed on our own. Um, as the Nigerian proverb says, one cannot sit down alone to plan for prosperity. We need the input of others, uh, we need to uh, connect, we need to network um, at events like this. We also need to watch the success of others and we can learn so much from watching others uh, from a distance. It's not just about one-on-one, um, -on -one, face to face mentorship. I'm going to take this off if I can, because it will give me more mobility. We've covered mentorship um, in the latest issue of Destiny magazine featuring uh, Mama Esther, who I think should be having her own mentorship masterclasses on just culture, heritage, longevity. She's 81 uh, and uh, just still flying so high and doing exceptionally well. But inside that issue um, of Destiny, we've, co we've covered the Kata sisters who um, work in a family business um, and what they have to say is that our dad expects more from us because we're his children. There's no going easy on us because we're family. He expects the reward of our continued success in exchange for his incredibly available mentorship as a father and a business partner. Just quite an interesting insight on mentorship and not going it alone from a family perspective. And then Oprah Winfrey, entrepreneur and philanthropist, says, a mentor is someone who allows you to see the hope inside yourself. And I think she raises a very important point around mentorship because often we seek mentorship not because we don't really know what's happening. Deep down inside ourselves, we do know what we want. We do know what we need. But it's just that nudge in the right direction. It's just that affirmation. But we should never underestimate that power and knowledge that comes from within. And I think Oprah's words really um, emphasize that in um, a powerful way. And the case for mentorship um, is a powerful one. Um, across the world, you'll see stats that support the case for um, the incubation and support of businesses and the mentorship of businesses as happens with the LaRuba program. 71% of Fortune 500 companies have a mentorship program and have reported success. 60% of UK business leaders have had a mentor and of these, 97% have said that they've benefited from the experience. 47% of organizations recently surveyed have um, mentorship programs. Uh, internationally. And then 69% of surveyed companies representing a wide variety of, in of industries have also had um, a wide variety of um, mentorship programs and programs dedicated to women, 74%, according to uh, Catalyst. So mentorship is widely known, widely carried out across the world, but I do think that in South Africa, while there are many organizations like the ones listed here, um, and we'll provide this list for you uh, via Omge, um, our strategic marketing manager. There are many organizations like this that provide some kind of mentorship. I think there are very few initiatives like this one that not just provide, that don't just provide mentorship and support, but also provide uh, market access. So I do think there's still quite a bit of work to be done uh, locally for us to maximize our impact in terms of mentorship. Now, my career journey has been one of a lot of learning um, and a lot of learning from myself personally but also uh, from being mentored. One where I've learned quite a bit from choosing mentors and not necessarily sitting face to face with them but actually telling myself that I'm going to learn from this person from a distance. I may not be able to secure meetings from them but I'm going to watch them very very closely and apply uh, what I observe to my own learnings. 
Um, my media career uh, began at the age of 16. Uh, I won a cover girl competition, a Tundee magazine cover girl competition at the age of 16, uh, which was really the result of my mother feeling that I was too much of a tomboy. Uh, I wasn't, uh, you know, sort of the young girl that she had expected or the feminine young girl that she'd expected to have. And so she took me to uh, modeling classes and ballet classes and eventually I won um, this modeling competition. And it was at that cover shoot that I realized that this is what um, I want to do. I want to be in media, I want to create uh, content, and I want to have my own media platforms. And so I won the competition, came to Johannesburg um, a couple of years later, and interviewed for news reading, for um, work on radio and television, and eventually secured a position on Metro FM as a newsreader and after that secured a position on the SABC News as um, a newsreader of the 8 o'clock news which at the time was a huge deal. There was no social media, um, there was no Twitter and Facebook and Instagram so it was a big deal to be um, on the 8 o'clock news. Everything stopped and everyone um, watched the news and while a newsreader I came across an opportunity to do a photographic shoot uh, for one of the magazines by NASPAPS through their subsidiary Media 24. And at that shoot, I discovered the opportunity to uh, be a fashion and beauty editor, uh, or fashion and beauty assistant rather, um, for uh, True Love magazine. So I went in for the interview thinking it was as glamorous as my TV job, uh, only to find that it wasn't. Uh, the fashion and beauty assistant is the person who does the very basic work of serving drinks, uh, ensuring that you know everyone is taken care of, uh, taking the merchandise back to the retailers after a shoot has been done, putting tape under shoes so that you and I can buy them after they've been taken back to the shops. So it definitely wasn't the kind of job uh, that I expected. But um, a part of me felt, you know, I'm a this, I'm a newsreader, everyone watches me 8 o'clock at night, I read the news of these famous people, why should I do this? And another part of me also felt that this is the way to learn. In fact, that was the softer voice that said, just do it. Just humble yourself and do it. And it's the best thing I could have done because I started at the bottom, uh, worked my way through, was in the right place at the right time when the opportunity for a fashion and beauty editor uh, position came up and was again in the right place at the right time when the position for editor um, of True Love magazine came up. Um, so at the age of 22, I then became the youngest editor of a national magazine um, in the country. And over that time, we developed the magazine and grew it uh, into one of the most widely read um, in the country at that time. And what I learned from there, which I didn't necessarily learn from being mentored by anyone, but certainly from the kind of culture that I grew up with, was the, the things we want in life don't always come packaged in the manner that we expect, firstly. And so look for the opportunities. And this is a huge thing, even for entrepreneurs, is look deeper. You know, sometimes when you get a specific answer, think and see how you can change your product, change your service um, to meet the requirements. And when you, you know, approach obstacles and things don't work out in, in the way that you expect, still look deeper for the opportunities and also ask questions and look um, within yourself. But if I had expected the opportunity in media from a print point of view to come in the manner I had expected, I certainly wouldn't have accepted that job. And that led to um, an eight-year stint and forming very strong relationships uh, within NASPAPS, particularly with Chris uh, Becker, the CEO of NASPAPS, who, who has remained a mentor uh, and actually supported my studies um, at Harvard University where I did my MBA. And what was interesting there was the fact that even though I left the company, went to Paris as head of South African tourism um, in, in France, you know, worked in a completely different industry, I could still go back and say, okay, now I've done my two years in Paris, I'm ready to go back and do the MBA, and they were ready to support me. And I think it's, it's really as a result of having built a depth of relationships and having spent that time building a depth of experience and investing in relationships. It is deeply, deeply important. For me, it's probably even more important um, than mentorship. Um, and it certainly paid off and been of enormous benefit to me in my career. At Harvard Business School, I did two years of the MBA, and one of the ideas and things that I worked on, obviously, was Lala Media, 
and the development uh, initially of Destiny magazine. And over the time, Dollar Media has developed into um, a 360 or multi-platform media company that reaches 4 million customers or consumers in more than 30 African countries. Um, we have digital now and not just print. Um, our fastest growth, in fact, is in digital, although we're still showing one of the few uh, media companies with brands that are showing growth in print. Uh, content marketing, which is our business-to-business -business, um, side of our business, where we publish for uh, various companies. Uh, we have an events and um, activation division, book publishing, and um, are in the process of launching our pictures or television uh, division. So that's how uh, the business has developed over that time. And we align our CSI to our objective as a business, which is to positively impact lives. Uh, so through She by Spark, which is a female entrepreneurship initiative, um, UNICEF for children, and Door of Hope, CH Pink for women uh, suffering from best breast cancer, which is the Carolina Herrera um, initiative here in South Africa, which we support, and of which I'm a patron and the Destiny Helpline for youth and students, which really um, provides access for students and mentorship um, and counseling for them, uh, free of charge via a, um, a helpline that's open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., which we launched around the Fees Must Fall um, initiative. So all of that is really um, supporting sectors of society that use our brands um, and also uh, supports the idea of positively impacting lives, not just with our content, products and services, but also with the initiatives that we support. I said earlier that mentorship is something that I'm very passionate about, and as a business we've recently launched uh, mentorfeed.com, mentorfeed, which is our online mentorship platform. It's only a month old, um, but has had enormously positive response, and through that we support the idea that mentorship isn't just about sitting face to face with someone, but it's reading the right content, participating in live chats, watching videos, downloading the right documents or having the right documents to download um, and sharing information. We'll be adding more tools and services uh, to this uh, platform, but it's certainly one that uh, you can access if you would like to enhance or increase your mentorship experience. So, what are my learnings and what are the things that I've learned as an entrepreneur? Uh, what are the things that I've learned as someone who's been mentored and also someone who uh, mentors others? So, first and foremost, it's important to begin with a clear vision. And I know from a business point of view, you'd probably say, think about what you want, um, that's the business plan, and put that together. But I've discovered that mentorship is very much a personal journey as well. It, you are transformed during that journey from the point where you, or at least entrepreneurship is a personal journey as well. From the time that you start with that business idea, right up to the time that you actually launch it, you are not the same person. You are a completely different person. Uh, and I think the point is not just to launch the product, but I think to actually come up and evolve into a different, into a different character that's well positioned to handle that particular business. Marianne Williamson has said, you can live your life out of a circumstance or you can live your life out of vision. Like a great athlete, we must have a clear vision of what we want to accomplish before we make a move. Vision in preparation for an action is as important as the action itself. So every day we need to ask ourselves, where am I going? What is my vision? Is my personal vision aligned to my business or is my business aligned uh, to my personal vision? From a scriptural point of view, where there is no vision, the people perish. So for me, that's the most important thing. And you'll be surprised at how few people have a clear idea of what they really want, especially entrepreneurs, and also don't have the ability to perform that elevator pitch of, you know, if you find the person or meet the person that you really want to find your business or support you, and you've got eight floors, uh, you know, elevator going down or up, uh, to explain what it is you are doing, what it is you want to achieve, what your vision is. Um, very few people can really bring it down to something quite succinct and clear as that. And sometimes as an entrepreneur, many of you are active in business already, you lose sight of the vision because you're so busy paying bills and uh, running the business from day to day. So it's important to regroup and go back and keep asking yourself, why am I doing this? Is the reason I'm doing this still the correct one? Is there anything I need to change? Is there anything I need to enhance? 
showing up in excellence and love. We completely underestimate the fact that few people choose to go the extra mile. Very few people like yourselves win awards for the great work that you've done. Most people are quite comfortable being average. They're quite comfortable just doing what's required. You know, just look at many offices and see, you know, many people leaving just as soon as that clock, in fact, from four o'clock, things start, kind of, the office starts emptying out. I can see some smiles here in front. Uh, you know, people know what I'm talking about. But very few people push themselves and go the extra mile. It actually isn't difficult to be extraordinary. Um, it really isn't. And making that decision to show up in excellence, to go the extra mile, do more than what's expected, give your customer even greater value, that's the love aspect um, of business, is always give greater value than what's expected. You will stand out, it's the easiest way to stand out um, and, and, and excel as an entrepreneur. And be adaptable. Um, if the client wants a different version of what you have to offer, make it happen. Figure out a way to make it happen. Yes, ensure that it's cost effective. Yes, ensure that you're still maximizing efficiencies in your business um, and that you're moving your business forward, but be adaptable. Ted K, author, says, a self-portrait is one way to describe our work. He says, every job is a self-portrait of the person who does it. So always autograph your work with excellence. So it's not just about your business and your bottom line, it's also about you and your personal brand. And from a love and emotional point of view, and this is an emotion that's completely underutilized in business, Rhonda Byrne, author of The Secret, says, the more love you give in your day-to-day -day life, which includes your business, the greater the magnetic power of love you have in the field around you. And everything you want will fall at your feet. <coughs> Just going into a meeting from the point of view of, how can I serve? Because from that service, you will get remuneration. You will make money. But it's shifting that energy from how can I transact to how can I serve? And how can I improve things for you and make your life better? And that speaks to the idea of shifting from sales to service. But just some interesting points. Your customer doesn't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Caring, love, service, all builds up to excellence. It all builds up to differentiating yourself in business. The purpose of a business is to create a customer who creates customers. And it's only through good service, not through price. Yes, price will get you somewhere, but what will keep you there, what will keep that customer is the kind of service that you give. Jim Rohn says, if you make a sale, you can make a living. If you make an investment of time and good service in a customer, you can make a fortune. It goes back again to the fact that not many people make that time. Most people are rushing to be targets not knowing that excellent service, caring, actually helps you exceed your targets and not just meet them. Steve Jobs, the late Steve Jobs says, get closer than ever to your customers, so close in fact that you, t you tell them what they need well before they realize it themselves, right? And that's your iPod, your iPads, all the things that Apple has come up with which they predicted we needed way before we realized that we needed them. And the journey of entrepreneurship is bound to have failure, it's bound to have challenges, and that's something we need to embrace and learn from and move forward. Um, and it's a difficult thing. It, it, it's a difficult thing, especially when you've had a high, or things have gone exceptionally well, and then the next thing, um, you know, they flop, and things don't go so well, and you don't succeed uh, as you had expected. But it's part of the journey. The most important thing is what do we learn from it, and also to accept and realize that it's preparing us for something greater. As Napoleon Hill has said, failure is nature's plan to prepare you for great responsibilities. And to quote myself, failure is an opportunity to learn and to do better next time. It's part of the path to greatness which was never meant to be smooth. Closely related to the point I mentioned earlier around vision and knowing what you want for yourself and also knowing what you want for your business is the idea of mastering yourself. It's important as entrepreneurs that if we want to lead businesses, if we want to lead people, we also have to know how to lead ourselves. And we have to master ourselves internally in terms of knowing our thoughts, mastering our thoughts, knowing that thoughts do indeed become things, 
and knowing that mastering ourselves is actually more important and more powerful um, than mastering others. John C. Maxwell says, you will never change your life until you change something you do daily. The secret of your success is found in your daily routine. And mastering ourselves also is about ensuring that we have powerful daily habits. We cannot expect to be at a particular point and on a daily basis not do the things that actually get us to that point. So our daily habits are enormously important in terms of determining how successful we are as individuals and as entrepreneurs. And finally, self-belief. Nothing happens without self-belief. You can have the best business model, you can have the best business plan, you can have the best opportunity to go to market, you can have the best access from initiatives like um, Le Rumeau. But if you do not believe in yourself, believe in your product, and believe in your ability to deliver, you will not succeed. That is ultimately the most important thing. And many people say, uh, you know, when I give talks like this is, why aren't you technical and talk about market issues or talk about economics and so on. And I think that's stuff that you can easily find. You can easily research um, and find what is happening in the marketplace, what are the things you should be looking at, what are the new opportunities. And you can do that at nauseam. You can study and get the best degrees, but if you do not believe in yourself, if you haven't spent time mastering yourself, studying yourself, know thyself, as they say, if you haven't spent time doing that, then a lot of that is not going to be successful and certainly not going to be sustainable. Rhonda Byrne says, believing contains no doubt, believing does not waver, believing is about absolute faith and remains steadfast despite what is happening in the outside world. It doesn't mean you shouldn't adapt, but even in the process of adapting, one should do so with belief. When you have mastered believing, you have mastered life. The game of life is the game of faith, it's the game of belief. So as you proceed in your businesses and grow them, may you always believe in yourselves, believe in your dreams, never lose sight of them. You're your own most important cheerleader. I'm sure you know that. And keep going as far as you can imagine, as far as you can dream. You are your own limit. You're the only ones who can determine how far you can go. You're the only ones who can limit yourselves, not what's external, but what's internal. Thank you so much and all the best to you and congratulations to all of you.